Well, hello, and thank you for watching. And you join me this morning. It's a very cold and very foggy December morning here in the UK. And today I want to be looking at some of the basic skills that I think everyone should have before they're allowed to ride their unicycle in public places. And why is that important? Well, I see that we are pioneers of a new form of transportation. And therefore, it's our responsibility to be able to demonstrate that they are safe, they've got a place alongside other forms of vehicle and can be used around pedestrians safely. And if our only way of stopping is by rolling into a ball and throwing ourselves into a bush, every time a car stops in front of us, the way we cope is by sliding over its bonnet. And if we've had so many crashes, that every time we smile, all our front teeth are missing, we're not going to be uh, demonstrating to the public that electric unicycles are safe. So these are the basic skills that I think we should all have before we set out around other people or other vehicles. And if you like, these are it's a bit of a driving test. If you can, if you can do these things, I, you can get a license to say, yes, I've got control of my vehicle and I can use it in public places. This is not about learning circus skills. It's not about riding backwards or a quarter of a mile on one leg or those kind of things. It's the basic skills that you should all have before you venture out around other people. And if you can do these things, then demonstrate it, and I will give you a certificate, uh, a wheel life certificate. We'll be in the post here, uh, and you'll have a driving uh, license from me, wheel life. And that you can take to the bank. Uh, not to the court, but you can take to the bank. Uh, anyway, so let's get started. The basic skills that you should all have before you're allowed out in public places. Let's get started. So I've set up the first test and I'm making an assumption now that I'm a rider that's got limited skills and I admit that's not much of a leap of uh, imagination. So therefore I found myself a place where I'm away from the general public, I'm not going to cause a danger or risk to anyone and I've set up a simple exercise, first test, test number one. And that is being able to demonstrate that you can start and stop your vehicle in a controlled manner. So imagine if this was your car driving test, you'd be able to demonstrate you could set off without stalling, without causing a problem and that you can stop safely where you intend to stop, not where you happen to fall off. So I've set myself up a challenge here, and I'm just gonna switch now to my phone camera, uh, and I'm gonna see if I can walk you through this one, he says, mastering the technology. Here we go. So back over to phone camera now. And here I've set myself a challenge. Now in the distance, there's the start point. I'm gonna come riding along until I hit this stop zone here. And this, uh, the cones in the center of this circle is the area where I want to be able to plant my landing foot, my stopping foot. So when I come to a stop, my foot will stop in that zone. I'll then be able to look up, look over my shoulder, make sure nothing's coming and I'm okay and head off away. So in a nutshell, that is a test. It's how can you demonstrate you can stop where you intend to stop, where you're supposed to stop and in a controlled manner and how can you start again? Let's just demonstrate that and we'll talk it through. So here I'm at the start line, I can see the finish line over there, I'm coming towards it, I'm at a controlled pace, I can see where I want to stop, and the idea is I come to a controlled stop and put my foot right in the centre of that circle. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now to start off, I'm just going to look, make sure nothing's coming. I'm aware of my surroundings before I set off, I don't want to set off and find somebody on a bicycle coming into me. So I'm looking around, I'm okay to go, I'm pushing off in a controlled way, and I'm safe to go. Now, those are the skills you need to have before you should be out in public. If the only way you can start is by holding on to something or with a friend running at the side of you, uh, then you shouldn't be there. So let's start again. I'm going to come along, controlled manner, come to a stop point, controlled weight, and put my foot down into the circle. Look over my shoulder, there's nothing coming, and I'm away. Textbook, thank you, Jonathan. You've passed the first part of the test. Starting and stopping, simple as that. Can you do that? If you can, tick that bit on the test sheet. It's time to move on to exercise and test part number two. Let's go. Right, time to move on to the test number two. Part of the test is about speed. And that's not about going fast, that's about going slowly. Because 
actually there's probably more skill needed to ride at a very slow speed than there is to go at a medium or even fast pace and having the ability to ride slowly in a busy area where there are pedestrians other people around you other things happening is a skill you must have before you venture out because no doubt you'll go into a public park and there'll be people and dogs and things running out you need to have control at a slow speed so this test is going to just demonstrate um, that you've got the skills to do that so here we are, I'm going to switch over to the video camera now and we'll film this and show you around the next part of the test. So here I've got a series of cones, uh, they're set out on the floor here and they are exactly, precisely three feet apart. Now the idea is I'm going to come down and I'm going to slalom down and weave in and out of these in a slow and controlled way. So that's the test, it's about having the skills to ride slowly and carefully. It's not about speed, it's not a race through the slalom, this is about control. Make sure I'm giving myself plenty of space around the cones uh, and that I'm not clipping the cones, I'm in complete control of what I'm doing. So let's give that a go. Selfie cam, so you can see my beautiful face. So here we go, I'm going nice and slowly, this is walking pace. If you've ever tried to ride uh, while accompanying somebody who's walking, you'll know it's kind of difficult to do that. But here I'm coming through a nice controlled way, nice control, give myself a nice big sweep around the end. Nice in control all the time. There you go. In and out the cones. As I said, it's not a race. It's about demonstrating I've got complete control. Nice big turning circle at the end. Complete control. Nothing to panic about. And so there you have it. Face trucking back on. And so that's as simple as that. Being able to ride in and out. I'm going to do it again now. And I'm going to focus now on thinking about not looking at the ground because when you're riding in public places it's almost like a game of chess you're thinking where the pedestrians are moving about three stages ahead so now i'm going to do the same thing again but i'm going to be looking all around me i'm going to demonstrate i can do that while i'm taking complete awareness of my surroundings so i'm going to be looking around me while i do that so let's go start that again but how can i be aware of my surroundings and still be in control where's that person coming from Okay, there's a person with a dog on one of those extendable leads. That's going to run out and take me out any second now. There you go. So I've managed to get around that nice and safely while I'm actually looking in other directions. Okay. How good is that? I'm looking around me. It's all good. Still in control. Still in control. Easy peasy. But I can't emphasise how important that is if you're riding in public places to be able to uh, manoeuvre around pedestrians. Now when I took my motorbike test, because yes I'm an experienced motorbike rider, uh, you used to have to do the test where you would go around a circle uh, and you would be able to go around a circle without putting your foot on the floor. If you put your foot on the floor it was an automatic fail. So I'm going to re replicate that now. I'm going to go around these two cones, let's choose these two cones, these two cones three feet apart and I'm going to be able to go around without putting my foot on the floor. So I demonstrate I can go around, I'm not clipping the cones, I'm in complete control, going round and round and round. Am I going to pass my test? Yes I am. Again, it's not circus skills, it's not trying to do the smallest turn possible, because yes, you can do you can do a lot tighter turn, no problem at all, you can do a lot tighter turn. It's about having control over a, a turn. Let's go around, let's do that the other way as well. I'm getting large because I'm feeling sick, but you need to be able to demonstrate you can do it the other way and again this is about slow it's not it's not fast it's about slow speed because uh, you're going any faster you'll start to drill yourself into the ground okay we've demonstrated now that we can start and stop in a controlled manner looking at the shoulders aware of our surroundings setting off we can ride carefully and at a slow speed in public places with an alertness and awareness of things around us you pass all those elements tick 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 prove it you're on your way to passing your real life driving test. Okay, next thing is to think about uh, driving with a bit more speed. Let's set up the next test. Right, so I've now set up the next test and the next test is about how you've got control over your wheel at speed and what I mean by that is how you're going to make sure you can stop it safely in a controlled way at speed. So for example if um, somebody steps out in the road in front of you or if a policeman jumps out of a bush or something like that you need to stop for quite quickly. 
So I've set up this little test. So I'm going to switch over to the uh, other camera now and talk you through it. So this is the equivalent of on your driving test when the instructor slams the clipboard down on the dashboard and you've got to stop. So over here, we've put the cones in this grid formation now. Uh, I'm going to start in the distance again. Come along, not massively fast, about 20 miles an hour, I guess. When I hit the first cones, I'm going to apply the brakes. And then these cones are set up in a grid. So I, I apply the brakes at the first one and I have to come to a stop somewhere inside the second grid. And that is in a controlled manner. It's demonstrating that I'm not flapping all over the place, but I can actually stop it suddenly should I need to. Now, because this is a test at a speed, I am actually going to put a crash helmet on. I'm only not wearing it until now because I want you all to see my uh, beautiful face. And who wouldn't want to see that? Uh, but always when you go out, make sure you're wearing crash helmets. I'm going to put gloves on and I have already got body armour on and knee pads on here. So, uh, underneath my trousers. So let's get suited and booted and let's try this speed stopping test. And then let's just talk about the technique. Okay. Okay, apologise. I'm doing a Michael Jackson. I've only got one glove on because uh, I can't operate the camera. Ow! If I come off it will be. Ow! Right, so I'm going to go along here at pace. Not massively fast. Where's the camera? Not massively fast, I'm gonna go about um, 20 miles an hour. So, checking around, checking off. Okay, get to the first zone, apply the brakes, and stop in a controlled manner. Nice and safe, no drama. Absolutely no drama, looking around, and off I go. So, nice pace, and then hit the brakes. I mean, that was so easy. And then, stop, control stop. I'm ready to go, and I'm off again. Easy. So absolutely no drama with that. And here's a bit of a technique. Let me just take my helmet off because nobody needs to see chubby face Jonathan for longer than they have to. When you come to a stop like that, um, you're riding all the time with your knees flexed, a bit of giving your legs, and then you're going to a, a, a lock position to stop. And you might come across a bit of a tremble of your wheel. And I won't to say it might be counterintuitive and I expect I'll get some comments below from this one. But the thing I've done that finds that gets most control over the wobble when you need to do an emergency stop is not to go slacker, not to go looser in the legs, not to go and try to oh, ride it out comfortably, but it's actually to go and lock the legs. Guys, they're doing a bit of a donutting in the car park. So when you come to a stop, don't try and go too loose because uh, it wasn't a small French artist, but instead you need to go rigid a bit more rigid lean back straighten legs not completely lock out so you're not your legs coming straight but but your legs are becoming a bit more rigid so you're holding in a lock position in a more rigid way let me just do that one more time to demonstrate what i mean so this time when i come in my legs are going to be bent and flexed really really soft come in like that. you can see my legs when i wasn't gripping the wheel i wasn't holding it tightly i was very slack and I had less control over it. So let me do it again one more time. This time I'm going to do it when I'm holding it firmly between my ankles. I'm gripping it tightly. Uh, I've seen people that ride it really flapping around between the legs. But my advice is nice and firm between your legs. And then straight, 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 straight. And then relax. So I'm, I'm, I'm stiffening up a little bit as I'm doing an emergency stop. But in control all the time. But the wheel is going nowhere. I've got control of it. My legs are straight, are locked. I'm firm, I'm not too floppy, and I've got complete control. Paddock over, I'm not going crashing over the policeman's bonnet of his car. I'm okay, I look around, and away I go. So that's it, emergency stop. So I've got one more thing, one more part of the test that we're going to do uh, that is an essential uh, for safe riding. But if you ticket it all so far, you're doing really well, you're almost there, one more thing to go, and then you'll get the Wheel Life driver's licence for your electric unicycle. Uh, so let's set up for the next one. Okay, here goes, here is the final part of the test. If I can demonstrate I can do this safely, then I've passed my real life driving test and I've got my license and I can go. Um, and this is about demonstrating you've got the ability not to look where you're going. Now, again, that sounds a bit weird and wonderful, but what I mean by that is that you can be clearly demonstrating that you can control safely the unicycle while you are looking in other directions. And that's important because you need to be completely aware of what is going on around you and, importantly, what's coming up behind you.
So in this test, we're going to ride for sustained periods of time looking in directions other than where we're going. Obviously, always aware of what's ahead of us. Uh, but being able to turn around and look to see if that bicycle is coming up behind us and therefore I need to go faster because we never, we never like to be overtaken by bicycles. Or if there's something coming up behind us, we need to be aware of it so that we're not causing a risk to them or to us. So in this test, as I set off, I'm obviously checking behind me as I set off because it's part of the test. And I'm pushing away, I'm in safe control. And now I'm able to look, I'm going slowly and I'm looking to my right for a count of five seconds and to the left. And all the time I'm in complete control of where I'm going. I'm not wobbling, I'm not out of control. Nobody's looking nervously thinking, who's this clown? He's going to wipe me out any second now. I'm in complete control. And importantly, like I said, is how do you know what's coming up behind you? So I'm not talking about a quick snatch and grab glance. I'm talking about how do you have a look in a controlled way at a sustained behind you. So let me just go around the GoPro and do that again. And this time I'm going to ride away and we'll look at the GoPro and I'm going to sing out the Boris Johnson hand washing song that goes, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jonathan. Happy birthday to you. Any complete control. So, that's it. I've now demonstrated that I can start and stop in a controlled way, aware of my surroundings, where and when I want to without curling into a ball and throwing myself into a ditch. Um, I can come to a, a position where I can, I can stop at speed as well, in a controlled manner, so all my teeth are intact. I'm not smiling and showing uh, a panel lid opening up. Uh, and uh, I can manoeuvre safely around pedestrians and I can go in tight circles and circle that, put my foot down. I've ticked all those uh, abilities, I can look behind me. So therefore I've now passed my driving licence and I can control my vehicle in public areas safely. And let's face it guys, that's what it's all about, is how do we demonstrate that these wheels can be safely ridden in public places without scaring the bejeebies out of people or without hurting ourselves or importantly without hurting other people as well. Yeah, so I passed my test, it's good, I can go. Aware of my surroundings, nice confident push, I'm away, thank you very much. Passed my driving test. Woohoo! Oh, my dad will be so pleased. Woo. So that's it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. If you have, give me a thumbs up, a like, and a subscribe. And please add your comments as well below. Tell me what you think are the tips and tricks and skills that people should have before you head out into public places. Again, it's not about being a circus performer. It's about being safe. And if you're out there and you're not in control of your wheel, then all you're going to do is discredit the electric unicycle. And, you know, the worst you're going to hurt somebody or hurt yourself or cause some real damage. But we don't want these things to be completely banned. We want them to be accepted. So be a good ambassador when you're riding your wheel. Wear your body armour and your crash helmets and stay safe. But most of all, enjoy yourself. Don't stop smiling as you're riding. That's it for this time. And hopefully I'll see you again next time on Wheel Life. Thank you.